Hello, if you're here today, then you are wondering how to care for your baby plants. Baby plants are a great way to expand your collection for cheaper. And they are also great if you like to watch your little plants grow, if you like to nurture them into bigger established plants, then baby plants are for you. However, they do require slightly different care to their more established counterparts, so I will cover that in this video for you. I am talking today about plants that are in pots that are six centimetres or smaller, so the tiny, tiny little pots that you get baby plants in. So because of this, you need to water them really carefully. You don't want to give them too much water, but you also don't want to let them dry out too much. Now, because they're in small pots and they've got a small amount of soil, the soil will tend to dry out quicker because more soil will hold on to more moisture. And these plants don't have a lot of soil in their pots, so they can tend to dry out quicker. So you need to make sure you keep on top of watering your baby plants. I would recommend little and often. And when I say often, you need to keep up with this. No judgments, please. I forgot to water a couple of my baby syngonium and I will show you the result. So here we have a baby plant who has not had enough water. As you can see, some of the leaves have dried up, they have gone crispy and they are they just need to be chopped off. This plant is still very much alive and very much healthy. It's still putting out new leaves. Um, it's just that it didn't get watered and it's dried up. Um, however, what happened was because I didn't water this plant and it was really dry, I then went a bit crazy and overwatered it. So this is the result of that. This is rot. You can see there it's squishy, it's brown, and that is the result of overwatering. And this is why I suggest watering little and often, because that is the way that works best for me personally. If I don't water, I get these crispy plants, and then if I overwater, I get rot. Here's another example of a syngonium that didn't get enough water. So the leaves have dried out, and the plant is still found, the plant is still growing. Um, luckily for this one, it's in a terracotta pot, so when I've watered it, I haven't overwatered it and overcompensated. So this one's not rotting, thankfully. There's another example I have here of a baby plant that received too big a drink. So the leaves have gone squishy, mushy, droopy. However, this plant, I caught the rot very early. I caught the overwatering very early and I removed it from its pot and allowed it to dry out. And that is what I would recommend doing if you have accidentally given your baby plant too much water. This plant can be saved by taking it out of this pot. And this plant is really quite wet, so I might even put it into dry soil or put it somewhere to somewhere sunnier to let it dry out quicker and the plant will be fine. But it just goes to show you how important careful watering of baby plants is. So the next tip I have about watering to avoid overwatering is watering from the bottom. So what I mean is you can put take your baby plants out of their cover pots if they have them. So they're just in their nursery pots and put them in a plate, a bowl, a tub, anything, put it in water and set the plant in it and so it will absorb the water from the bottom. Just make sure you keep an eye on it. Don't go away and leave it, you know, overnight or all day because you, once the top of the soil feels moist, you want to move the baby plant away from the tub of water and put it back into its place, basically. And that's a good way to make sure that you don't overwater a baby plant. After you've watered your baby plant, you need to monitor it to make sure that either it isn't going to dry out too much 
or that you're going to water it again before it needs it. And this will vary from plant to plant. For example, ferns like to stay on the moist side, so you want to keep the soil moist. Other tropical type plants like to be almost dry before you give them another water and succulents and cacti need to be completely bone dry before you give them any more water. So do your research and figure out the watering needs of your plant and it will be the same for the baby plants. The other thing that you need to remember about baby plants is that they are smaller and therefore weaker than their established counterparts counterparts. So for example, if you have a plant that requires high humidity, such as your philodendrons, your calathea, if you have a baby version of one of those plants, then giving it that humidity is even more important. A bigger, more established plant will give you a bit more leeway with the humidity, but baby plants really do need the humidity if they require it. So keep on top of that if you want your baby plants to thrive. Make sure they're getting humidity if they need it. Again, research your plants, find out which plants like humidity or not. And because they are smaller and a bit weaker, you want to follow the same lighting guidelines as for a bigger plant. However, I would say that you want to go to the higher end of its lighting requirements rather than the lower end. And what I mean by that is, for example, philodendrons, we all know that they can survive if you put them in low light, although they would prefer bright indirect light. Um, they will survive in low light, baby plants will survive in the low light, but they won't grow. So I have this baby plant, it's some sort of baby philodendron and I had it all summer in a dark corner and it survived fine, it's happy enough but it didn't grow at all. So I've moved it into a better light situation and it's just now starting to grow, putting out new growths um, and it's doing a lot better. So make sure you have your baby plant on the higher end of the light requirements. If you put them in a lower light environment, they're not going to grow as quick, they're not going to thrive as much. Here's another example of a baby plant. This is another philodendron, this is Silver Sword. It was also in a dark corner all summer and it grew, to be fair, it did grow a little bit, but not enough for my liking. I've moved it to a higher light environment and it is putting out growth much, much quicker. So there you have it. There's my tips on looking after baby houseplants. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a like and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much.